Hey, this is Jamie with Stonemeyer Games, and today I'm going to talk about my six favorite surprises in tabletop games. Now, in real life, uh, outside of the gaming world, I don't really enjoy surprises. I don't like the idea of surprise parties. I don't like surprise visitors. Very few surprises that I actually enjoy and get excited about. But in tabletop games, I, I really love them. I really love having something unexpected happen when I open the box. And maybe it's just a nice unboxing. Maybe I just discover something that I didn't know was in the game. But there are a few games that have gone over and beyond to add something special to the game um, in ways that I didn't expect. And I wanted to talk about them today. Uh, I will. There's one of these that's a little bit of a spoiler. Um, but it's so old by now that I, I don't think it's that much of it. So there, there's one legacy game I'm going to talk about that has um, a, a small spoiler. I'm not going to spoil like what's in it, but I'm going to spoil where to find it. So really, if you don't want any spoilers, and there's another game that there's a little bit of that too. Um, so really, these are surprises. So I'm going to talk about surprises, and if you don't want a, a surprise revealed, these aren't like typical spoiler type surprises, but they are surprises. Um, I would recommend not watching this video. Um... Yeah, let's jump in. Um, and I'll, I'll talk about at the end a, a little bit about some ideas that I've had about surprises, some that I've used and some that I haven't used. And uh, we can talk about them in the comments because otherwise this will be a, a pretty short Sunday sit-down video. The first is that there was a magic set, Magic the Gathering set, about 10 years ago called Zendikar. And Zendikar was all about uh, exploration. And one of the really cool things that Magic did that I've 99% confirmed was true. I never experienced it myself. I've only seen pictures and rumors that I think were confirmed, but I don't think Magic itself has ever really confirmed it publicly. Was that in a very small percentage of Zendikar packs, Magic, uh, Wizards of the Coast, inserted genuinely old, rare, often rare, usually just old, um, cards into the packs. And here, here's a photo of one pack, one of those packs. I think this is a legitimate photo. And you can see this old, um, well, I'm forgetting the name of it. It's a candelabra of something. So this is a very old magic card. It is not a newly printed version of this card. It is a card that is like 25 years old. And it's in a pack with brand new Zendikar part cards. So people who played Zendikar on opening weekend at tournaments and whatnot, uh, a very small number of those people discovered these old rare cards in their packs as if they were, I mean, it, with the theme of Zendikar, they were discovering old cards. And I am just blown away that Magic did this. I love that they did this. They held on to these cards and they decided to actually do something with them that, uh, that fans could discover and find. If, if this is true, I, I'm pretty sure this is true that this actually happened. Um, I only played Zendikar online, so I, don't, I never had a chance to, to open any of these. But I, I just love the idea. I love how it's tied with the theme of this set. And I love in a game where there is rarity and old stuff that, uh, that Magic was able to have the, the foresight um, to, to do something really cool with those, those old cards. So that's Zendikar, hidden old cards in brand new Magic packs. Um, and these are in no particular order. The next one is a game that I actually have. This is called The Grim Forest. Uh, and the Grim Forest, in the component list, are, I believe, 58 cards. Um, but, let's see if that's right. I have the back of the box here. No, it doesn't have the, the component count here. There's a certain number of cards that are listed in the rule book. I believe it's 58. And, but if you go through and you count the cards in the game, you can only find 57. You're one short, whatever that number is. You're one short. And there's a, uh, th this is just so clever. There's, there's a uh, magic lamp card among those cards in the pack that you find, but the Magic Lamp doesn't really do anything if you don't have a Genie card, and there's no Genie card in that deck. However, there is a Genie card, not just hidden under the insert, but hidden under a piece of cardboard that's underneath the insert. Um, so, I, I love that there's a hidden card. That's been done before a couple times, hidden cards. We'll talk about a few more of those on my list. I love that there's a hidden card, but I love in particular that there's a card that ties to it, that makes you say, you know, I, I have this magic lamp card, but I don't have a genie. Like, what, what does it even matter if I don't have the genie? So it gives you a reason to start looking for the genie somewhere in the box. Um, and I, I just love that connection, that, that they thought of that connection. Um, it, it just a really, really clever inclusion, really nice surprise in the Grim Forest. 
Uh, this is one that I discovered organically. This is the one that I alluded to that is a little bit of a spoiler. Um, but again, this is an old game. This is Risk Legacy. And in Risk Legacy, there are tons of surprises. I'm not going to spoil any of those surprises. And they're visible surprises when you open the box. But, again, similar to the Grim Forest, if you take the insert out of the box, you will find this pack taped to the bottom of the box, or the bottom of the inside of the box. It says, do not open ever. And there's something in here. Um, in fact, there are multiple different things in here. So Rob Davio has said that he uh, he didn't want one person to, or one, one person or group to open this and give away the secrets. So he actually designed, I believe, four different packs. So there are four different things that could be in here. So even though you may have had it spoiled for you by someone, it may be completely different than what's in yours. And some of them, well, actually, I don't even know what they all are. I, I, won't, I won't decide for you if you want to open this or not. But I love that, A, there's something hidden under the insert that's always cool. Um, and I think this is one of the first times this has ever been done. Uh, but uh, B, that it tells you not to open it. That there's a thing in here. There's definitely a thing in there, and it tells you not to open it. That is so cool. So not only is there a surprise to discover it, but there's another surprise um, if you open it. Or you can just not open it and, and wonder forever what's on the inside of yours. Uh, I, I love that. I absolutely love that. So that is Risk Legacy, the uh, Do Not Open Ever pack hidden under the insert. The fourth one is one that I have not discovered on my own. I haven't, I haven't actually seen this in person, but I am enamored with it because I, I heard about it online. And that is, there's this big box of uh, Cards Against Humanity cards where um, they hid a card inside the lining of the box. So you can see a photo of it here where like you can't, it, it's not under an insert that you can easily access. To get to this card, you have to cut open the lining of the box and pull it out. And uh, so, so it's one of those things that you might not even know about um, if you didn't hear about it online. Or you, if you look carefully at this box top or this box bottom, one of the box top or bottom, and you can kind of feel that there's something going on under there. I think that's where maybe the first person discovered. They were like, there's something in here. I, I don't know what it is. And they had the, uh, the, the good idea to actually cut open um, this lining and to pull out this card. I just think this was awesome to do. I think Cards Against Humanity, I know they, uh, we as maybe hobby gamers, we have different impressions of this game. But I think they do fun, whim whimsical stuff. Uh, just because it's fun. And this is one of those things that the company does just because it's fun. And uh, I, I love that they did it, that they actually hit a card in the lining of the box and didn't tell anyone. They let people discover it on their own. That's an awesome surprise. That's Cards Against Humanity. Uh, my fifth one is a game that I no longer own. It's Exploding Kittens. And Exploding Kittens, uh, I, I backed the Kickstarter campaign. I got my copy, and I knew from following the updates, they said... We've included something that we're not going to tell you about. Um, and I had no idea what it was going to be. I thought maybe it would be a, 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 you know, a cat miniature or something like that. And then I opened the box. And if you've played uh, Exploding Kittens, you know what I'm talking about. When you open the box, it makes a cat sound. They have the, this uh, motion sensor that's triggered by the, or I think it's motion or like distance sensor that's triggered by you opening the box. And there's a battery and there's a speaker. There's all the stuff that they put into it at not a small cost, just so that when you open the box for the first time and every time, it makes a cat meowing sound. They didn't have to do it, but they did. And I loved it. And that, that first time I opened it, I was just delighted that they, that they did it. I mean, it was, it was such a complete surprise. Um, I just think it was brilliant. So that's the only example I have of adding a special sound to a box. Uh, and and I, I absolutely love that Exploding Kittens made that decision. It was a huge surprise for me, especially as a cat lover. Um, Walter, I don't think... Hey, Walter is on camera. You can see Walter back there. The number six, that, that was Exploding Kittens. My number six and my last one, before I get to a greater discussion and a few mentions of my own games, um, is uh, Imperial Settlers. In Imperial Settlers... There's a really beautiful uh, box insert. It's, it's kind of a simple box insert. It's just cardboard, but they decided to print it, which is a, a step above other box inserts where they, they have printing on it. And there's there's a, a beautiful field on it. There's some some uh, there's some text. Um, but if you lift that insert out of the box, on one of the edges that you can't see just by looking into the box is this little thing. I'll hold that still so you can find it. Mission failed, he found us. Oh crap, they're little uh, like ninja type characters down there. Again, they didn't have to do this, 
But they decided to print art on the box, then decided to hide this little thing under the insert. And I can just, I, I didn't discover this myself. I saw it on Board Game Geek. But I can just imagine when people discover this for the first time when they open their game. It, it must just be a, a moment that makes you smile and a moment of delight. I'm delighted just by knowing about it. And uh, I, I love that, that Portal Games thought to include this in Imperial Settlers. And this is really, this is an easy one. I mean, I mentioned some pretty difficult ones here, like putting the card in the insert, the exploding kittens thing. Um, but this is pretty easy. So if you ever print an insert, why not hide something on the corners uh, just to show people that you took that extra thought and effort to, to think about um, what people might, might discover when they, when they lift up that insert. So yeah, those are my six surprises. I'm sure there are more out there. I've heard that Van Ryder Games has some stuff like this. I haven't seen it. Um, Escape Room Games do kind of have that feeling of uh, discovering surprises. And Legacy Games often have... Yeah, Legacy Games have a ton of surprises. The thing with Legacy Games, and the reason I didn't put them on this list, is that I go into a Legacy Game expecting to be surprised. Um, so I think it takes it to the next level when you have something really unique and special like this. And this was kind of the first one, Risk Legacy. So that's why it stands out a little bit to me. And actually there is, I'm not going to name it, but there is an example of a Legacy game that did a real surprise that I did not enjoy because of the gameplay impact. Um, it was a substantial gameplay impact that was a surprise and I did not enjoy it for that reason. Uh, so I, I think it's... Uh, it can be, these surprises can be hit and miss. But for the most part, I do enjoy the surprise element of legacy games. And I go into them wanting to be surprised and knowing that I will be surprised. Also, uh, there are video games. There are video games with tons of surprises. Little Easter eggs. Um, I'll get to Easter eggs in a minute. Uh, but even like alternate endings or things that happen when the game ends where it begins a new game. Uh, Zelda, all, many versions of Zelda, I think, became popular because you discover things by accident just by like walking into a wall that looked blank. Um, or reading about it, reading about some hidden thing on the internet that uh, that people uh, found and, and shared with other people. Um, I, I love that that stuff in video games. So feel free in the comments. Video games is an area that I don't know a ton about. So if you have ever been delighted by a surprise in a video game, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Let's talk about a few of my games though, just for fun. Um, I have one visual example, and I'll mention a few other ones. So in uh, the original Tuscany, in, I was inspired by this Risk Legacy thing. And in the original Tuscany that was on Kickstarter, not Tuscany Essential, but the original Tuscany, I included a, a pack of cards that says something to the effect of open at your own risk. I think that is what it said. And it was a nod to Risk Legacy, of course. Uh, and it had a, a pack of, well, I, I won't spoil it for you in case it's still out there somewhere. Um, it's something that I don't think was used very often. It was kind of an outlandish idea, but I just thought I'd have fun with it and do it. That was T Tuscany. Uh, in The Rise of Fenris, there are uh, surprises that you know about when you open the box. You can kind of see, okay, these are the things I'm going to be surprised about. But there's also something else that's hidden, that, that's revealed throughout the campaign. The campaign tells you to look for this thing, but, uh, but I think it's a, a neat little surprise. Um, Easter eggs. There are tons of Easter eggs in our games. I, I, I have put an increasingly large number of Easter eggs in our games. Some of them are, are like my cats appear in pretty much all of our games. The St. Louis Arch appears in our games. St. Louis Area Code 314 appears in a few games in a few different places. Um, what else? There, there are, I'm in a few of the games and like uh, people, certain people's photos are in certain games. Uh, and many of our games have little nods to other games. So like in Euphoria there is a card with a board game on it, and that board game is Viticulture. Uh, there are other little things like that throughout our games. There's actually a bunch in Tapestry. We put a bunch of Easter eggs in Tapestry. But the big one that, that I wanted to talk about today, the thing that I didn't do... Um, so in, I'm, I'll talk about Charterstone. So Charterstone is a legacy game. There are tons of surprises in here. I'm not going to spoil any of them. Uh, it's a game of discovery and surprise. Uh, and there's... I think there's a pretty good... There's some pretty good surprises in here. However, there's one thing that I almost did that I didn't, that I changed at the last minute. I decided not to do it. And I, and I think I, I'll talk about it today for the first time just to let you know and, and let you know what I was thinking. And you can let me know how, how dumb it would have been or how cool it would have been. Either way. Um, there's a book I love called Ready Player One. And uh, Ready Player One is basically a, a, a virtual world treasure hunt. Um, and... In, in this world, this uh, this guy who has created the, uh, the this virtual world um, that that uh, people are exploring, he basically built a game into that world that no one really knew about. He didn't explain all that much about uh, what what uh, this game was, other than that 
that there was a huge prize, a massive prize for the winner. Um, and then he just said people could go and find it. Um, and so I love that idea that there was, there was a hidden game in this universe uh, that, uh, that people have very little information about. They have to spend a lot of time trying to find even the first clue, the first key to figure it out. And so for, t for Charterstone, one of the things I was thinking about doing that I came very close to doing was when you got to the end of the campaign, there was going to be a poem or a little riddle, a little riddle that uh, was very similar to the first riddle in, um, in, uh, in Ready Player One. And that riddle was going to take players to a website where they could answer questions about Charterstone, very difficult questions about Charterstone that you would only knew if you played through the campaign and retained all the materials, didn't throw anything away, and could actually uh, could, could answer very uh, riddly type questions. So very much in the vein of Ready Player One, where they're not questions like, what is on card number 205? It would be like a riddle about card 205 that you'd have to think about and make some Easter egg connections and um, maybe do some math. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't completely write out these questions, but they were going to be fairly difficult riddles. And every time you got one right, you would unlock the next level and you'd go to the next level. There were going to be like seven to ten questions. And if you got uh, through all the questions and you were the first person to do it, you were going to get a substantial prize. I was thinking like $10,000. And I, I, I didn't know, I didn't fully think this through. Obviously, I, I, I wasn't sure if I would, um, I definitely wasn't planning on advertising it. I wasn't going to advertise that this thing was going to happen. I was going to let people discover the riddle on their own when they played it. And either decide it, what it, either kind of figure out what it was or what it wasn't. I was hoping maybe that people would uh, either know Ready Player One or they would search, they would Google search for this riddle to see what it meant. And by searching for the riddle, it would take them to the website, something like that. Um, so it was, it was going to take some sleuthing work. But in the end, I, I decided not to do it. Um, I, I wasn't sure how it would go over. I didn't know if people would be angry that, it, that, uh, that some people had knew about this thing and other people didn't know about this thing. Or I didn't want people to be angry if they discovered it and didn't realize it was a clue to $10,000. You know, that's, that's a substantial amount of money. Um, uh, and I... I don't know. And I also didn't, I, we didn't quite have the security in place to ensure that someone couldn't just somehow get past every level of the riddles with, uh, by, by kind of forcing their way through. We had a pretty good system set up. So we really did. I mean, we had the system set up and ready to go for those riddles to be put in there. Uh, but we decided not to do it in the end, or I decided not to do it. Uh, but I'm curious what you think about that. Like if you ever encountered that in a game, if a game had a meta level, um, uh, that, that would mean something. I, I guess something else that I've thought about doing in those regards that I've decided against doing again would be putting um, golden tickets in games, similar to the Willy Wonka Chocolate Factory thing, where like one in 10,000 games randomly has a golden ticket in it that means something fairly valuable. Maybe it's, maybe it's a $500 gift card to our web store or something like that. Um, I haven't done it because I, 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 I'm not sure it quite fits into Stillmeyer Games' philosophy. Like, it definitely fits into the fun part of our philosophy. But uh, will would people be disappointed if they didn't win, even though the odds are heavily stacked against them? I don't want to cause a rush of people to buy a game just for the chance of getting something. I'd rather than buy the game because they want it and they want to have fun with it, not because they might win money from it. Um so I haven't done that either, but I'm curious about your thoughts on, on that as well. I, I'd love to someday do some sort of surprise like that, 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 uh, that is fun and doesn't hurt anyone's feelings. I'm always kind of looking out for that. Uh, it doesn't make anyone angry at me or my company. If I can help that, uh, people get angry enough at me and my company for random things. So I don't want to do, try to do something cool and fun, um, and, and have it have a big backlash emerge from it. Uh, and actually by saying that, that reminds me of one other thing that another company did, uh, which was uh, Plaid Hat Games had a virus-themed game that came out a few years ago that um, only a few people got a f got the first copy of it. And when they did, I'm, I'm going to forget some of the details here. I wrote a blog post about it when it happened. But basically, like, the only way to get this game is if the people who got the original version of the game infected three other people. I think they went online and entered a code member, enter maybe entered email addresses or something like that. And those people who they infected 
were allowed, if they wanted, to buy the game. And if they bought the game, it would be shipped to them, and then they could infect three other people. Uh, so it was kind of, they were simulating this viral idea of a game about viruses um, to really distribute the game. Like, that was the only way that I'm aware of to actually get the game. You had to be invited by someone else, basically. And I think for that reason, a lot of people got upset about it because they perceived it as a gated thing, that they couldn't get it unless someone else invited them, which is true. But it's not like every game is like that. I mean, it was just one example of one game. And I think it's, I, I like when companies try cool things like that. And I kind of feel bad that there was any, any backlash about it uh, because uh, they, they tried something cool. And, and I, I like companies and people who try cool, innovative things um, that are going to be fun for most people, even if maybe a few people uh, feel a little stung by it, as long as it's not the majority of people. So yeah, those are my thoughts on games with surprises. I'd love to hear your thoughts and examples of other games, tabletop or otherwise, that have things that genuinely surprised you. If it is a spoiler in like a legacy game, please tag it with a spoiler warning so people don't accidentally read it um, up front, all caps. Um, and I'd love your thoughts on the random ideas that I mentioned, the golden ticket idea and the, the ready player one idea or anything else like that that you think would be fun to maybe someday include in a tabletop game. Yeah, that's it. Thanks.